Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be going over my favorite products for the month of June. I've tried out a lot of products this month and a lot of good things have come out of this month. So I'm so excited to share with you some beautiful palettes and some amazing skincare that I really do feel like has made a big impact on my skin. So if you wanna see those products, then let's just, let's get going. we are heading into July. This summer is just flying by. So I want to start off with foundations for you guys. I have two different base products that I've thoroughly been enjoying. So we'll start off with the foundation that I'm wearing right now. I bought this when Neiman Marcus was having a pretty decent sale. And this is the Guerlain L'Essential Natural Glow Foundation. It took me a little bit to actually put this on my face and start wearing it. And ever since I started wearing it, I really cannot get enough of it. I've been wearing a lot of lighter coverage foundations lately so it seems like every time I wear this I feel like this is full coverage. I would say this has more of a medium coverage that's a little bit more buildable towards full not necessarily reaching full but because I've been wearing tinted moisturizers and just light makeup in general this seems like so full coverage to me even though it's not. It's a really nice foundation. It's going to get you coverage and it has a very natural skin like finish. So there's just some foundations that I feel really do kind of sit on the skin and you can see see them. This is one of those foundations where I feel like the actual finish is quite natural and it looks as close to skin like as a foundation could while also giving you coverage. I like the way that it wears and I just feel like it really does perfect my skin when I want that extra bit of coverage. Wear time on it is decent and I'm pretty picky about foundations. I'll wear any foundations any day however I do have a type. I do notice there is a specific type of finish that I prefer that I just think looks more natural and this is one of those foundations that has it. So it's a really beautiful foundation. It has like a slight almond scent to it that I really like. It's very subtle. It's got a lot of hype for a while and I never picked it up and I'm so happy that I decided to because it really is a beautiful foundation. Um, so the next item I'm actually quite surprised by. This is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid Tinted Moisturizer and initially when I got this honestly I wasn't that in love with it. I thought it was okay. I just had different expectations for it but now that I've been looking more towards Towards a lighter coverage since I'm staying more at home and also my skin is looking nicer. I've been surprised by how much I've been grabbing for this. So it's very affordable to begin with. I mix two shades, light 7W and medium 9W and it's a pretty good color for me and I like having options to go lighter or darker especially with the sun even though I haven't been going out. I mean it is a tinted moisturizer and at first I didn't like it because I was expecting it to give me a little bit more coverage than it did but now that I've gotten used to it and I've gotten used to applying it and how I like to apply it. I really think this looks so good on this skin. So to give me that extra coverage, I do rely on a little bit more concealer. So I will conceal the spots that I have acne on. I'll put a little bit of extra concealer on my cheeks because I have extra redness there and under my eyes. And I feel like it really does even my skin when I finally put this on. So the areas that don't need quite as much coverage, this does the perfect job of evening everything out and with concealer as kind of a power duo. It does really create quite a flawless finish while also just having a lighter more comfortable coverage on your skin so I think this is a really good tinted moisturizer I did talk about it in my top five foundations for summer this didn't quite make the top five but I have to say I have been enjoying it a lot more recently and I've been grabbing for it just because my skin has been nicer it's very comfortable and when you pair it with a concealer you're good to go you've still got the coverage that you need so I've been liking this a lot and it's very affordable I did pick up the pretty fresh foundation that just came out so this is a tinted moisturizer it looked like they just released a liquid foundation and I haven't had the best luck with ColourPop base products. If anything, I would say this one's probably the best and it's still not amazing or groundbreaking. So I'm excited to try out that foundation. So that's kind of my thought on these. Um, moving on to blush found that I've been grabbing for them a ton. And these are the Mulan and ColourPop collaboration blushes. Unfortunately, they are out of stock right now, but when they do come back in stock, I will let you guys know because these blushes are beautiful. Like most of you guys, I received my Mulan collection very, very delayed because of 
the current situation. And uh, when it finally came, again, I waited a few weeks before I had the chance to try it. And ever since I tried these, I can't put them down. The other items in the collection are also amazing, but I feel like I've really been reaching for these because these aren't colors that I normally go for. So we have Matchmaker, which is a little bit more of a light nude shade. And then the one that I'm currently wearing right now is Good Luck Charm. This one is a little bit more terracotta warmy. And I prefer a bright pink blush. That's kind of my everyday, what I'm comfortable with but I have found I have been liking these more neutral tones recently and so because my collection of neutral toned blushes is limited these are two of the ones that I have and they just come to mind because they're new and I have been absolutely loving these blushes I think they're really beautiful bronzy tones for the summer and I have not been able to put these down so if you are into blush tones like these once these come back in stock I will post about it on my community tab just make sure you have my post whatever my notifications on the bell thing <laughs> I don't know how YouTube works but I know you will get notified when I post that now let's move on to the eyeballs so we'll start off with eyebrows though this is a really good product that I've been using a lot this is the Marc Jacobs brow wow duo I really like this you guys I think it is a wonderful product so on one end you have a pencil and it's not the sharpest most defined pencil but it deposits a really good amount of color so that kind of makes up for it and it also blends really easily. So I feel like this does deposit a lot of color. It's very creamy. So sometimes you can go a little bit overboard. Your brows can look a little overdone, but it actually blends out really nice. So if you just have a spoolie, then all of a sudden your brows look really natural. So I've been enjoying this a lot. It lasts a long time. And then I've also really liked how this has a brow gel on the other end. And it really does a nice job as putting your brows in place. And I like it because it's not too tinted. There's some tinted brow gels where they have too much color and if you get it on your skin, you can see and then all of a sudden your brows just look really messy. This gives enough of a tint that you can use it without the pencil side, but also if you're using it with the pencil side, it does enough to just hold it without making your brows look a mess or adding any extra unneeded color. I've been enjoying this a lot and using it a lot and I just think it's a really nice brow product. I tend to stick to the same brow products over and over again, so it's been nice to mix this in. I've been enjoying it a lot. I have a few eyeshadow palettes. If you're wondering where Natasha Denona bronze is. I just feel like I haven't gotten the chance to really use it enough considering I only got it a few days ago. Same with the Patrick Ta stuff. So that might be featured next month if I still love them as much as I do now. But I have four palettes to talk with you guys about. So the first one is also from Marc Jacobs from that same collection that the brow duo came from. And this is the Extravagance eyeshadow palette. So this one's pretty new and untouched. I had a really difficult time with the customer service at Marc Jacobs don't really recommend you purchase from the Marc Jacobs site at this point. I returned my palette because it came broken and they were just giving me a rough time. So I returned it and then I ordered a new one from Sephora because it's just easier to deal with. But anyways, this palette itself is beautiful. It is a limited edition palette and I love the packaging. I think it's really stunning and elegant looking. And then you have all of these beautiful neutral tones. Now keep in mind, I am the first one to admit that there really is nothing unique about this palette, but you are getting such a solid palette with great quality shadows. They do the work for you. And what I specifically like is these neutral shimmery tones they're so glam and glittery without being like chunky glittery they just really hit the light and shine so beautifully they have that very nice soft glimmer to them so i find the finishes of these to be a little extra special the colors are not unique you know you can get these in the natasha denona Prince palette the artist couture palette basically any palette but just as a whole it's good quality it's really beautiful and it's a smaller palette so you feel less intimidated you kind of know what look you're going to get when you grab for this palette so I've been enjoying this a lot and I was so sad when I returned the other one and had to wait for this one to come in the mail it's so good you guys another baby that I have been loving this month is from Charlotte Tilbury she's released quite a few new products lately which by the way my setting spray came in the mail today I forgot to use it for my look today but I'm definitely going to film a review on it this is one that just has really stood out to me this is the desert haze quad you guys are really coming at me about this Charlotte Tilbury video. It is coming. I promise I'm actually about ready to film it. I just have to film one more tutorial and then I'm done. But this has been so wonderful, you guys. It is very boring. And again, just like the Marc Jacobs palette, you have these colors. You do. There's nothing unique about it. But the formula in here, oh my god, guys. It is 
one of the most buttery smooth mattes I've ever dealt with in my entire collection. It does a work for you. And every time I do an all matte look, I'm like, you know, all matte looks look really good. I'm just in love with the quality of this and I like how you compare it with other Charlotte Tilbury palettes because their palettes tend to be really glowy and shimmery. Sometimes you need this to kind of bring everything down so this is a perfect quad to pair with other quads and I don't have the other All Matte quad that she has which is called the Sophisticate. I do need to grab that one. That one's more cool toned. This is the Warm Tone Sister and you guys the formula, one of the best matte formulas seriously. So pigmented, so blendable, so creamy. It does work for you and I highly recommend it. I do. I just think the quality is... Mm. And also, Kaleidos came out with the Escape Pod eyeshadow palette. So they have a whole collection called the Make Your Escape Collection. And generally speaking, I really enjoy everything from that collection. I have a whole review on the whole collection. But of course, what I love them for is their eyeshadow palettes. And I really feel like they did a nice job but with their new one. This is the first 15 pan palette that I have from them. They had one previously at the beginning of their brand, but they really amped it up with this one. I feel like the packaging, she's a bit chunky, which I don't love but it's made up for in the palette itself. So this is one of these palettes that truly just inspire me a lot. I feel like everything looks so gorgeous. I love the finish and the dimension that you get with these shimmers here. It's all around a gorgeous palette. The mattes are pretty nice, you know. They aren't as amazing as this Charlotte Tilbury quad, but they get the job done. I'm impressed because of the colors that they went for. They can be harder to work with, but I think overall they did a very nice job while also keeping the price of this palette reasonable. It is $42, but I just feel like the whole concept and everything is really original. I feel like this color story was made for me, and it's a big deal to me when a palette leaves me feeling inspired and leaves me wanting to create more looks, and that's how I feel with this palette. So they did a really nice job on it, and this color story really speaks to your girl. Last eyeshadow palette, I mean, of course I'm going to talk about it, and it is the palette that I am wearing on my eyes today. This is the Pat McGrath Lab Divine Rose 2 palette. This came out this month or last month, the end of whatever. It came out within the month. And I was able to score the beautiful mirrored pink packaging, even though your fingerprints get all over it. I love it. And here she is. She's looking a little bit messy because I've been playing around with her a lot. Really, really love it. I know you guys always ask me how this would rank. At this point, from my rankings from last year, I'm sure everything ranks differently. This is definitely one of my favorites from her. I wouldn't say it's my favorite, but I've been feeling very inspired by this. I actually have this as my highlight right now. I've been enjoying this as my blush and I just feel like these are tones that I'm very very comfortable with. The quality in here is spectacular. You have a really nice trichrome or whatever it is. It just I really like this palette and its colors I feel very inspired by and I feel like even though a lot of the colors are kind of in the same family you still are able to create quite a lot of looks. Like I haven't created a look from this palette that looks like this yet so I've been loving this palette quite a lot. Highly recommend it if you were thinking about it. If these are colors that you're interested in, I think this is a good first palette to go for if you're thinking about getting Pat McGrath. If you're more neutral toned, I would go with the original Divine Rose, but if you're a little bit more adventurous, looking for something that gives you a little bit more diversity, I do recommend this one a lot. I really have been enjoying it. The last kind of makeup-y item that I have is a lip liner that I just kind of have been reaching for without even thinking about it, so I thought I would mention, and this is the Pat McGrath Labs lip pencil in the shade buff. So this is a really nice pinky kind of lip pencil, quite nude, and it's pretty close to my lip tone, maybe a little bit more on the pink cooler side. I've been really liking this for every day. Pop a little gloss on top. It creates a really nice natural full looking lip. Right now on top, I'm wearing the Pat McGrath Labs Opulust Gloss in Coral Liaison. So this has a lot of dimension and glitter to it. Really love this gloss, by the way. But anyways, I just love Pat McGrath lip pencils because I feel like they are so creamy. They go on with such ease and they last. Like, they really have great staying power. They do their job as a lip liner while also having easy application. So if you're looking for a really good, great, everyday Pat McGrath color from her lip line because she has an incredible lip line, Buff is a really nice color to start off with. Now we're getting into skincare, and I feel like sometimes skincare videos can be a bit boring. They're not the first video I go for for watching, but I think obviously skincare is very important because that's 
kind of what makes your makeup look good, you know? Your makeup's gonna look 10 times better if the skin underneath is better. And you guys know I've been very vocal about my struggles with acne. I do have acne, I do get breakouts. It's nothing extreme, but it's enough to where I always tend to have a breakout on my face no matter what and my skin has been looking the best that it's looked in months if i'm being honest the texture's been really smoothed out finally the breakouts the big cystic acne is stopping i still get breakouts but i've noticed they're a lot smaller they're not really deep cystic and painful anymore so first i want to start off with the sunscreen and this has nothing to do with my breakouts but <laughs> i've been enjoying the sunscreen so this i actually ordered from octoly to test out so they did send it to me but i've been on the hunt for a good sunscreen and this is not a bad price you can get this for $15 on Sephora so Octoly sent it to me but I of course like I requested it I wanted to try it and this is really good so this is SPF 36 and I've been using also my Centello one that I like a lot but I feel like that one is a lot lighter it's a little bit more moisturizing but I feel like it wasn't as effective so when I go out for my runs I feel like I just sweat the Centella right off this one is a little bit more heavy duty it still is very moisturizing I think it's a great base for makeup also it smells a little bit more sunscreeny the thing with the centella that i love is that you can't even really tell it's a sunscreen at all this one you can tell it's a sunscreen but i feel like it's a little bit more heavy duty which is more important so i've been enjoying wearing this more so when i go for runs i feel like i don't sweat it off quite as easily and it is very moisturizing so I really like this and it's very affordable. $15 for a really great sunscreen for your face. It's made in Korea, just a very nice product. Creates a nice glow to your skin, moisturizing. So I've been enjoying this SPF a lot, but so the two SPFs that I kind of have been sharing some love with is this Enos Free Daily UV Sunscreen and then also Centella Pur Purito, Purito Centella from Amazon. So I really like this one. I think this one's actually a little bit more affordable than the Centella one. And then now you guys, here is where the magic has been happening. And I've got to be real with you guys. I was a little skeptical at first. I have always felt like my acne was just, there was no savior. No skincare was going to improve my skin because my acne was just so spotty. It didn't matter if I regulated my routine or not. I got acne regardless and it just came when it wanted no matter the products I was using but I feel like these products might have gotten out under control and it's crazy. These were actually gifted to me to try out and share my thoughts and however I wanted. I mean, I didn't even have to share my thoughts if I didn't want to. I tried it because it was a courtesy and I've also been very curious about Ola Henriksen. That's why I was very excited to try these. And I was not expecting any crazy results because quite frankly, nothing works. I always have acne. But you guys, in the last three weeks my skin is so much better it is crazy here's a photo of how my skin was looking at its worst during this quarantine i don't have clear skin but in the last two weeks the texture has really gone down my skin looks brighter it feels better this comes in a set from ola henriksen they have two different sizes so the big size it's set of these three called the mega wonders they also have a little set i believe it's for 25 of small ones i did read though that the reviews said the products were really small it probably wasn't worth your money but it's a great way to try out the product if you're curious. So in it comes the, the Glow OH Dark Spot Toner and then the Banana Bright Vitamin C Serum and then finally the Sea Rush Brightening Gel Cream and I'm really excited to share individually my thoughts of the product. So my routine has been, I've just been using the cleanser that I've been using. It's by I Do Care. It's not really worth mentioning, it's just a cleanser. I've been using that one for the past couple of months. But ever since I incorporated these guys into my routine, all of a sudden my skin has made a 180. At night, I cleanse and then I use the dark spot toner and then I finish off with the brightening gel cream and then in the daytime, I wash again and then I use the vitamin C serum in the morning and then the gel cream moisturizer. I almost didn't even try the dark spot toner on myself. Uh, it just seemed like something that I didn't need because it's supposed to target like discoloration darkness, fine lines, things like that. Just not anything I personally felt like I struggled with. So I believe that this product is more so targeted towards mature skin, especially those with melasma. I didn't like it at first because I thought it was very, very harsh. I could kind of feel it not burning my skin, but it definitely felt harsh on my skin. I didn't like the way that it tasted on my skin, which sounds weird, but it tastes bad on your skin. Yeah, but it, it definitely just felt like a very strong, potent product, and I didn't really need it to begin with. However, I think it does a really good job of 
taking off my makeup that I might have left over because it is a toner and honestly I have a lot of acne scars and I feel like this has helped kind of help those fade a little bit quicker so even though I can't say I noticed this major difference because it's not supposed to target problems that I have I haven't gotten as many zits it's been helping take off that extra makeup that I might have left and my acne scars are kind of disappearing so I think it's this so I've been loving this. And then the Banana Bright Vitamin C Serum. I really like this. I don't know if it's doing anything, but like I said, my skin is doing better. So this one is very moisturizing. I think that's why I like it. I like the way it smells. It has a banana deliciousness smell and it feels really good to apply in the morning. It smells really good. It's just a joyful process to begin with. Also, I have normal to dry skin. So this is actually an extra layer of moisture as well to my skin, which I find very important. So this has helped the texture of my skin. And I do feel like it's helped brighten my skin. My skin is looking a lot brighter nowadays, just more alive and both of these I think are really brightening my skin. It's incredible. So I've been liking this a lot. It just feels good. I enjoy having this as a part of my routine. And then the moisturizer, the gel cream, I would say not my favorite moisturizer I've ever used, but it's been nice to pair with the product since it's from the same line. It's not the most moisturizing product I've ever used as far as moisturizers go. I mean, it's fine. It does a good job. I like the way that it smells, but I've been kind of aiding what I feel like this lacked with making sure I'm using hydrating masks and products like that on top of this. I would say in the set, this probably has had the least amount of effect on my skin. So these two products have been the best, but I mean, they all pair nicely together. And this is a fine moisturizer. It's just when I run out of these, I'm purchasing both of these again. This one, I'll probably move on to a different moisturizer, but my skin, you guys, there has been vast improvement. And the only thing that I've changed in my skincare routine was adding those products in. And seriously, in the last two weeks, I was skeptical at first and now I don't have perfect skin but oh my gosh it's improved wonders okay <laughs> so that's all I have as far as makeup and skincare I do have one kind of fashion product to share with you guys I've been dressing like a garbage can when I'm not on camera I don't really have too many fashion favorites for you I do have some workout wear that I'll sh probably share in a separate video but no some earrings I love earring talk so I discovered on Instagram this earring brand called Janie B gems and I made an order of two pairs of earrings and I've just been wearing them non-stop I think they're so cute so this is the first pair that I got just this really cute lock with this mobby purpley stud really simple really cute and these ones are my favorite so this is like an agate stone and it just is a layer of hoops really cute and both of these are quite versatile they match with a lot of different things just thought I'd share the love I've been looking into a lot of smaller kind of jewelry boutiques handmade women owned love it and oh so good so I wanted to share that definitely take a look into their jewelry they have really cute chunky layered necklaces as well that I'm looking into so that is all I have for my favorites for this month I hope you guys enjoyed it let me know some products that you've been loving all around really good month of trying new products so thank you guys so much for watching this video I hope you enjoyed it if you aren't subscribed to my channel already I would really appreciate it if you would take the time to do so and I will see you guys in the next one bye guys have a good one